In all my years of gaming, I had always been a big story-driven gamer. The more story, lore, emotional connection that I have with the game, the better. I connected with the Metro series instantly because it was not just the run-of-the-mill post-apocalyptic game. Instead, it tells the tale of survival, love, compassion, action, horror, and more. Now we arrive at the last stop of this emotional journey, which is Metro Exodus. And man, is it a ride. The story in Metro Exodus is by far the best in the series. Artyom, Anna, Colonel Miller, and the whole Spartan Order are working their way out of Moscow to make a better life for themselves. But as always, the group has met with more challenges than ever before. There were a lot of times during the story I was met with really sad moments that actually made me think of my own family and how tomorrow is not always promised. The struggles Artyom and his crew go through made me really appreciate Dmitry Glukovsky, the author and creator of the Metro Universe and 4A Games, so much more. They are not just going for an emotional reaction, they are also trying to grasp the player in a multitude of ways. There were times that I was sad. There were times that my heart was pounding from an action-packed firefight. Hell, there were even times that I felt like I was playing a survival horror game. I've never had such a roller coaster experience in a game and enjoyed it as much as I did. As you move on from Moscow, you and the group are affected by the emotional stress that this nuclear winter has placed on your shoulders. We also see the glimmer of hope that leaving Moscow has given them. In Metro Exodus, players not only get to explore a city outside of Moscow, but you also get to explore a multiple different regions within Russia. When leaving Moscow, the Spartan Order finds the Aurora, a post-war train engine they can use to carry them across the Russian wasteland. You and your crew travel on the Aurora for over a year. You see spring, summer, autumn, and winter. With each changing season brings a new level to the player, with new weapons, creatures, enemies, and environmental challenges. The decision to move from a more on-the-rail map design to a semi-opened sandbox world is one of the best decisions 4A Games has made in the series. That is when you really start to see the graphical power of this game. The overall visual representation of the game as you progress through the story is stunning. I'm not just talking about the graphics, I'm speaking on how the level and art design really help paint the picture that the dev team is trying to showcase in Metro Exodus. I was blown away by the detail 4A Games put into this installment of the series. When you go from games that were mainly underground, frozen, and limited on color to one of the most dynamic visual experiences in the first person shooting genre that I have ever seen, it's almost shocking. This really goes to show how much the team cares for their fans and wanted to give the game the best possible send-off that they could. Another thing that has really been improved are the creatures in the world. Some creatures like demons and watchmen have returned to the series, but we also get new additions like spiders, shrimp, humanimals, and large mutated boss battles. This is where the horror side of the game really kicks into play. Due to the fact that I was mainly playing the game in the late evening, when the in-game time would change from day to night, I'm not gonna lie, I turned into a total baby. The dark tunnels, frozen tundras at night, and lonely creepy boat rides had me on the edge of my seat. I got even worse when I ran into creatures or even hordes of creatures with barely any weapon ammo, health packs, and more. The heart palpitations were totally real. This game took my breath away visually, but it also made me scream in fear more than ever before. This is when I really understood that this is just not a first person shooter. This is a survival horror shooter that I couldn't put down. With this game being more of a survival shooter, that means a lot of times you'll find yourself low on munitions, filters, and more. As is common with the series, as you traverse through the levels, you can loot areas and use what you find to create in-game essentials and customize your weapons. Metro Exodus is the first game in the series to introduce an on-the-go customization system. This helps you create munitions, grenades, filters, and health packs as you explore the world. You can also customize weapons with new attachments found in the world or change your attachments at any point in time. I found this to be a really helpful tool. As someone that is very indecisive when it comes to what weapons I want to use in the game, I thought it was very cool to have the option of changing 
what I wanted on my weapon at any point in time. There are a lot of times that shooters get over diluted with the addition of extra modes, unnecessary add-ons, and over-the-top gameplay like wall running. This is not the case with Metro Exodus. The game has stayed true to its roots, and because of that, this is one of the best story-driven shooters that I have ever played. The game really makes you feel like you're in this world, barely clinging on to hope that one day you will live a normal life. With that said, the game sticks to its roots for sure, but that isn't always a good thing. While playing the game, I found glitches you would usually find in this type of genre like ragdoll glitches. But also, what really got me the most was the stiff controllers on the console version of the game. I reviewed this on PS4 Pro and felt sometimes the controller was only halfway working. I actually switched the controller out twice because I thought maybe my controller was half dead. Maybe I needed to buy a new one. But come to find out, it was just the game itself. Now this is obviously not something that ruined my in-game experience, but it did make me feel that the controls in-game haven't been updated in some time. My time with Metro Exodus was truly something special. Yes, the game had a few technical hiccups, but what I really took away from this was the story and emotional experience. 4A Games and Deep Silver should be very proud of the title they have created here. This title really gave me hope that story modes in video games are not fading away and they will be here for some time. I can say with a clear mind that this game is what story-driven first-person shooter fans have been asking for. Please, do yourself a favor and buy this game. My name is Celeb from Cinelinks.com and Second Opinion Productions, and I am giving Metro Exodus a 4.6 out of 5. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace out.